All right, guys, it's that time of the week again, and we are back for another instalment of the Championship Transfer Rumour Roundup. The done deals are already starting to filter in, and we've got a bunch more rumours to digest in today's video. As always, I'd like to hear from you guys on these in the comments down below. Without any further ado, let's jump in. We'll start out with the managerial news because we have had several new appointees in the championship since we last did one of these videos. Swansea finally replacing Michael Duff. They got their man in the end with Luke Williams coming in from Notts County. Very excited to see how he gets on at Swansea. Does feel a lot more like a traditional Swansea manager, you'd maybe say, compared to someone like Duff. It's a big step up from League 2, but the attacking football he had Notts County playing, I'm interested to see how that translates to Swansea. Plymouth Argyle have gone ahead and appointed Ian Foster as their new manager to replace the outgoing Stephen Schumacher. Very interested to see how that one comes along with Plymouth. We've got quite a bit to talk about them throughout today's video, so stay tuned for that. And we also saw Birmingham appointing Tony Mowbray. Do you think that is a sensible appointment for Blues in their current state that club's in, how they've tippled down the championship under Wayne Rooney. Like we said on yesterday's video, still feel like there's a lot of untapped potential within that Birmingham squad and a lot of those attackers especially I think will thrive working under a manager like Mowbray. Do get your thoughts on those managerial appointments down below. Next up let's hop into some done deals which have gone through recently. Ipswich sealed a loan deal for Blackburn captain Lewis Travis. I think this is a decent pickup from Ipswich. Travis is a midfielder who is in a similar mould to the likes of Morsi and Luongo and gives them an alternative option in that sort of role. In terms of off the ball work, I've always quite liked Travis, likes to stick a foot in, always up there with the tackles per 90 stats in the championship. Maybe not the cleanest of players on the ball, but I'm excited to see how he gets on over the rest of the season under Kieran McKenna. Huddersfield have added Serbian forward Borjan Radljevic to their ranks. I'm excited to see how he gets on. There was absolutely no doubt in my mind that the Terriers absolutely needed to add at least a forward or two to their ranks in January to go ahead and boost their survival chances. They've gone ahead and done so here. He's coming off the back of a good season in Finland where he scored 25 goals and 42 appearances. Made a cameo in their FA Cup tie over the weekend against Manchester City too. And they also struck that loan deal for Alex Matos who comes on loan from Chelsea for the remainder of the season. The 19 year old had been in and around the senior squad under Pochettino this season and will learn quite a bit from this spell with Hudson. Huddersfield on loan. Huddersfield have picked up some gems in years gone by on the loan market. They'll be hoping Matos will have a similar impact in the second half of the season. Stoke City completed a loan deal for Leicester City shot stopper Daniel Everson. He made his debut over the weekend in the FA Cup. Was a tough first game to throw him into um, against a very good Brighton side after not playing for the last six or so months. But I do think Stoke have got a very good goalkeeper there in Everson. Obviously know him very well from his time on loan at Preston previously. Shot stopping wise, when you do give him a run of games, I truly believe he's got the potential to be one of the best goalkeepers in the championship at that selected category. Distribution still leaves a little bit to be desired and the frustrating thing for Stoke will be it's another goalkeeper coming on loan. They've had quite a long list of them coming in recently. They'll be hoping that at least going into the summer they'll look to get a first team goalkeeper nailed down on a permanent basis. But for a loan until the end of the season, I do think that's a good deal. Blackburn have boosted up their fullback department by adding in Ashton Villa left back Ben Crescenti in for the remainder of the season on loan. They also struck a loan deal for Brighton youngster Yasin Ayari, who obviously spent the first half of the campaign on loan with Coventry. Really looking forward to seeing how Finazaz gets on at Middlesbrough. This deal has since been confirmed. He obviously spent the first half of the campaign out on loan with Plymouth. Was in really good form for them and could add an extra dynamic to that Borough creative department in looking to push them up a level or two and get them properly back in playoff contention. I think for the money Borough paid in the end, around about that 2 million fee. They've seemingly got a really good deal there for a player who's already good enough to be cutting it in the top half of the championship and potentially has the ability to go beyond that in the future. It's not all bad news for Plymouth though because they have added Ashley Phillips to their ranks on loan from Tottenham for the remainder of the season. An area where Plymouth have needed to improve is at the back. I'm interested to see what Phillips comes in and delivers. He obviously left Blackburn for Tottenham in the summer. He's yet to make his senior debut for Spurs and I think a loan back 
back to the championship was always going to be more than likely, given he is still a very raw player, still at only 18 years of age. But he'll be someone whose development will be closely monitored from now until the end of the season. Sheffield Wednesday have struck a loan deal for Brighton goalkeeper James Beadle to join them for the second half of the campaign. The 19-year-old had spent the first half of the season out on loan with Oxford United in League One, where, to be fair to him, he was doing very well. Clearly very popular within the Oxford fan base, kept seven clean sheets in the first half of the season and pulled off some terrific saves as well. Always a little bit of a gamble, putting a fairly inexperienced goalkeeper into a championship relegation battle when he's never played at this level before, but clearly Beadle's already at a level where he is ready to make an impact in the championship. But those are some of the recent done deals which have gone through in the championship. Now without any further ado, let's hop into the rumours. We'll start out with Fabio Carvalho who's on his way to Hull City. We've had it confirmed by the Hull City owner himself and by the time you guys are watching this one we may have already had official confirmation. Really exciting deal for the Tigers though to get a player with Carvalho's ability on loan for the second half of the season is hugely exciting. I think that at times Hull have maybe lacked that bit of a spark especially if Philogene's not been playing but to throw Carvalho in and amongst those fellow attackers that Rossini has got at his disposal is very exciting. Now he spent the first half of the season out on loan with RB Leipzig, didn't really get much of a chance there and really the only downside of this whole deal is the fact that Carvalho hasn't really played much football for the last year and a half now, didn't really get that much of a look in at Liverpool last season either so may take a little bit of time to properly get up to speed but once he goes ahead and does that there's no doubt in my mind that Hull are getting a cracking player here, uh, scored 10 goals, got 8 assists in Fulham's uh, last promotion season from the Championship and what an option he could be for a side looking for that extra 5 or 10% to get over the line and into the top 6. Luke Kundal is on his way to join Stoke City on loan for the second half of the season. The Wolves midfielder had spent the first half of the campaign on loan with Plymouth but is set to follow Schumacher in going over to Stoke in what is a real blow for Plymouth. As of recording this he's already been recalled by Plymouth by Wolves and is expected now to go out to Stoke for the second half of the campaign. Three goals and five assists for Kundal for Plymouth in the championship obviously a real hammer blow considering they've just lost Finazaz as well exciting addition for Plymouth but could mean some departures for Stoke we had an exclusive story coming out from Team Talk yesterday that a triple exit could be on the cards for some Stoke midfielders in the January transfer window the first of those midfielders being Daniel Johnson who only just joined Stoke in the summer transfer window but when you go through such a big influx of players under a, a previous manager when Schumacher now comes in he's going to want to look to rip up the script almost and get his own boys in. Daniel Johnson has featured in the majority of championship matches for Stoke up until this point hasn't quite ripped up any trees so far he's got two goals and two assists but seems to be a case where Stoke would be happy to lose him in January if there was an offer. The same report also mentions Lewis Baker as a player that could be made available for a deal in the January window with Stoke looking for an asking price of anywhere between one and two million pounds. Now Baker's deal at Stoke runs until the summer of 2025. With Schumacher seemingly keen to move a few players on to make way for some fresh players, Baker could be one of those players that falls by the wayside. I would be interested to get some Stoke fans' perspectives on that one. And then the final player in question is Ben Pearson, another player similar to Daniel Johnson that only joined Stoke on a permanent basis in the summer. Thought Pearson did really well initially on his loan spell to Stoke from Bournemouth. Since signing on a permanent basis, probably hasn't quite been up to the same standard. I mean, in typical Ben Pearson fashion, he has been a walking yellow card this season. Already 10 bookings he's racked up in the league alone this year. If this news is verified in the coming days, I'm already expecting the rumours to pop up with a potential reunion with Ben Pearson at Preston. There could be a potential vacancy popping up in North End's midfield on the horizon, especially if Ben Whiteman doesn't sign a contract extension with us with his deal set to expire at the end of the season. Wouldn't be surprised if that's a rumour we see popping up soon. But it is worth pointing out that Pearson is on a contract with Stoke until 2027 and with the club reportedly looking for a fee in the region of 3 to 4 million to sell him, I'm not sure they'll get any nibbles at that price point in January. It's currently being reported that Sunderland are now at the front of the pack to land a deal for Bournemouth forward Kiefer Moore now. Moore has been linked to several championship clubs already. We've seen Ipswich 
to Cardiff, saw a link to Leeds United as well recently, and seems as if from Bournemouth's perspective, they're happy to lose him on a permanent basis, but if it comes to it, they maybe would be willing to accept a loan deal later on in the window as well, especially if a significant amount of his wages were covered by the Championship club. From a Sunderland perspective, I honestly think Kiefer Moore could be an ideal striker for them. They have lacked that natural number nine this season. Kiefer Moore got a proven track record at this level. I think he's quite underrated in a lot of the things he does because he's sort of a big sort of traditional target man that's sort of how he's built his frame but his movement I think is really good link up play as well and also has an eye for a goal in the championship so whoever manages to land him I think he's getting a really good deal. Tottenham are reportedly keeping tabs on Leeds United youngster Archie Gray who has been enjoying a real breakthrough season in the championship this time around. Now Archie Gray is an interesting one the links would suggest that Spurs are angling for a move in the summer transfer window rather than trying to take him in January but one to be aware of nonetheless. Has played quite a few roles throughout the season for Leeds. Personally, I think he is better suited to that midfield role but with that being a place of high competition for Leeds he has been shifted out at right back for quite a chunk of this season so far. Do you think that defensively you can get at him a little bit? That was certainly the case when Leeds came to deep down. I thought Liam Miller had a really good game against Gray who was at right back in that game but in central midfield got an excellent eye for a pass really clever and vision of the game you can see that he's got and it's no surprise to see some Premier League clubs starting to ramp up a bit of interest. Isaac Hayden still being linked with a move to the championship for the second half of the campaign. He is currently still on loan out in Belgium, but due to a lack of game time so far this season, seems like Newcastle are willing to pull him out of that loan deal and send him out on loan to the championship instead. Plymouth Argyle, one of the clubs being most linked with him at this stage. I do like Hayden. I think he's a good player, especially for championship level. Only problem with him is that availability. He hasn't played that much football in the last three or so years. Struggled with a few big injuries last time he was out on loan in the championship with Norwich. Any championship takers for Ovi Ajaria, the former Reading midfielder, is now available on a free transfer after having his contract terminated early by Reading. He's not played that much football over the past couple of years now, but on his day, undoubtedly could be a game changer at championship level. It was only a few years ago that we were comparing Ajaria to... A Berriese at QPR and since that point both players have had careers which have gone in drastically different directions. On his day a few years ago Ajaria was one of the silkiest dribblers in the championship but from reading a few reports would seem a few attitude details have let his career spiral away from him recently. We mentioned the possibility of Leeds forward Joe Geldhart going out on loan in one of the previous videos and Plymouth have since emerged as a potential candidate to take him for the second half of the campaign. I think he'd be quite a tidy player actually for the way Plymouth play, the creative plays that they've lost recently as well would fit into that side quite nicely. Not got much of a look in at Leeds so far this season, only racking up 160 59 minutes in the championship so far. Charlton winger Corey Blackett Taylor is one to keep you around for the remainder of January. He is out of contract with the League One club at the end of the season and so could be available at a cut price in January. Done really well so far this season with eight goals and six assists in the first half of the campaign. Has previously been linked with several championship clubs, including the likes of Huddersfield, Plymouth, Hull, and Derby are also keeping tabs. Sheffield Wednesday reportedly working on a deal to bring in West Ham midfielder Connor Coventry and this could be a tiny bit of business by the Owls if they do manage to get this deal over the line. He's not had that many chances in the West Ham first team this season and a move in January would seem more than likely. He spent the second half of last season out on loan in the Championship with Rotherham where I thought he did fairly well. 23 years old and I think he'd be a good option for Wednesday in the middle. According to Fabrizio Romano, Leicester City have made an approach for Inter Milan midfielder Stefano Sensi. It's just a few years since he made the move to into Milan for around about £20 million. Now the Italian midfielder is out of contract with Inter at the end of the season so Leicester could land a bit of a cut price deal here. He's not had the best of times at the San Siro since making the move. He spent the last couple of seasons out on loan and hasn't had much of a look in in their side this season. But it would seem as if Enzo Maresca is a big fan of the midfielder. I wouldn't be surprised if this deal went through. Well guys there you have it. That will now wrap it up for today's video. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you did get to enjoy make sure to leave a like 
like and any of the transfer rumors that you've seen going around make sure to get them in the comments down below plenty of rumors flying about the championship right now make sure to like and subscribe to keep up with all of the latest news from that guys thanks for watching and i'll see you all in the next one